Now, let's all join together and proudly sing the anthem of this great country in which we freely choose to call home. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. I want to continue so that we can begin the invocation. And we have Captain Kelly Chan uh, to do this for us. Um, and uh, thank you, Kelly. Uh, many of you already know Captain Chan, but I will let him speak for himself. Yes, it is true. Uh, yes, it is true. I am related to Phoenix Bakery. Uh, it's my pl uh, privilege to uh, invoke Scott, uh, and to invite, uh, to give the invocation to invite the God's president into this uh, proceedings. Shall we pray? Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we just give thanks for this day, Lord. We give thanks for the, uh, the weather. We give thanks for those who planned this event to honor those who went before us, Lord, who helped open the doors for us so that we could join the mainstream American society. We just ask your blessings upon their memory, Lord, for, the, for it is written that, there, that a man dies twice, once when he physically dies, and again when his name is mentioned no more. We just pray that we continue to remember those of our members of our families who have served in the United States Armed Forces, and we just ask your blessings upon this time together. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I guess I was supposed to say something uh, quickly, and it just, uh, it's, uh, it's a meaningful time for me because uh, as a veteran of Vietnam, uh, it's, our numbers are, are thinning daily. And my family knows that I served, but they really don't know much about my service because most veterans, when they get out, don't talk about it, especially Vietnamese, uh, Vietnam War veterans, because it was not a popular war. And all we did was just wanted to change our clothes and get on with life. So maybe as a result of this uh, ceremony, I have regrets that uh, I did not seek guidance more from my uncles who did serve and to find out about their experiences. Because it's a shared experience that only, you only can share with the uh, peers because they understand. They understand what you went through. So I just encourage you to reach out to those in your family who have served and find out what did they do? How did it help them grow? How did it help them mature this? in life. Thank you. Thanks so much, Kelly. As you may not have known, but Kelly just mentioned, he was participated in our November session. 
in which he received a medal on behalf of his uncle. He was uh, deeply moved, and as the weeks went by, he just thought, why sh don't we do something for the, on the USS Iowa? And I thought, yeah, sure. <laughs> I thought it, maybe I'll just entertain him. Um, and then the weeks went by, and then he says, well, let's just set up a site visit. Sure. The darkest, stormiest, rainiest morning of the last day of December. Of December. Uh, so you have to thank Kelly, not only for germinating this idea, but also thanking Kelly for courageously envisioning this proposal to uh, Mr. Chang Liu, now the CEO of Cathay Bank. May we have you stand, sir? We thank you so much. Because we know that Cathay Bank is just not for Chinese, but all for Chinese Americans and those who've served this country and live and breathe and, and educated, maintaining business. We thank you. I'd like to move forward so that you will get, begin to, well, that you'll be able to meet uh, personally, once and for all, the gentleman responsible for mounting this national project with the assistance of flag officers who also believed in this effort. May I introduce to you Mr. Edmund Gore, National Director for the Chinese American World War II Veterans Recognition Project. Thank you so much, Margie. Um, uh, you know, I would like to really give uh, Rear Admiral for a day, with all due respect to Jonathan Yun here, Rear Admiral for a day, Kelly Chan, for all the work he's done to help us secure this particular venue here today, and it's a wonderful venue. So, Kelly, thank you so much again. Also, I just want to say for, for Kelly's service, I just want to give a round of applause to all Vietnam veterans as well during this time. I, I won't. I only have 30 minutes today, <laughs> or the three minutes. I only have, I only have a few minutes to talk about this, but, um, and I won't go into the whole story, but, but Kelly, uh, one of the reasons this project has gone on and on and on, and I've had the perseverance and the courage to continue on the project, was because my friend died in Vietnam. Every day that we had this project is because of his courage when he died. And I was in college, I was fortunate enough to go to college, and so I thank him every day for the opportunity for me to go to college, go to work, have a family, grandchildren, et cetera, et cetera. So we thank all those who served in Vietnam. I mean, thank you. I, I really just want not to talk about the project itself. Thank you. I, don't, I, I need hair, but I don't need the flag. I, I just want to just talk a little bit. It's not so much about the project, but all the wonderful people that we have met across the country and why this is more of a family reunion of descendants of Chinese American World War II veterans. And for this, I want to thank everyone here at L.A. Lodge. Uh, President Wayne Ng, I see him right here. We have Eugene Moy and, and, uh, and of course, Margie Lee, co-chairs. And Susan Dixon, Susan Singh, Mark Munson, Swellen Kwok, uh, just so many of you. Gay, uh, thanks, Gay. I'm, I'm sorry, good that I saw you. And if I didn't mention your name, it's because I didn't see your name on Mike Fong's uh, list of donors. So where's Mike? I, I know Mike's here. Mike's right there. Thank you, Mike. I just want to let you know that I'm giving you a plug here. But I just want to thank all of you who are here. The reason I say that and thank all of you for being here is to understand why this is kind of an interesting reunion. Uh, I have a friend here that I have not met personally yet, but Dennis, where are you? Dennis Wong, where are you and your wife? They're right there. I, I apologize to you so much because you, I, I just messed, totally messed up your, your invitation to the first round of things. And so I just want to uh, call you out, call you out. And this is an interesting thing about this entire event. Your dad and Gary, Ambassador Gary Lack's father had the same travel agent during World War II. They both served in northern France, in the Rhineland, Ardennes, 
So somewhere along the line, maybe you guys have met, but this is the thing that's been so wonderful about this project. Many of you probably did not know your dads had other friends and relatives who were War II veterans. It's only like coming here today, you might see someone who is now a, a descendant and someone is going to pick up the, uh, be presented the Congressional Gold Medal. So that's one of the things that, that has been wonderful about the project. Um, and then the one last thing I'll say about how wonderful this project has been is this. These gentlemen over here that will be presenting the medal to you, as well as many of you others who have helped register veterans, are really the heart and soul of what we're here to do. They served our country. And I want to make sure that throughout this entire event across the country in the last several months, we've had ceremonies, that we've had Chinese American faces who have risen to the ranks of admiral, rear admiral, two, three, four star generals throughout our country, and they've served. And it's the same thing that I would say to anyone who has a daughter or a son who's contemplating, not college, not for everybody, but maybe a life in the military where you certainly can serve, but also learn skills. So I'm going to put that plug in there for you, guys, and let you know that I'm going to try to recruit for you. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Judge G for being here because she has, her, her dad also has some interesting stories and people that have crossed paths with him during his journeys through the war. So this being Easter weekend, this is why I would like to say about how miraculous this project was. We did this entire project through Congress in one session. Does anybody know how long a session of Congress is? One year? Two years? Okay, we're going to have to go back to political science. It's a two-year each session of Congress is two years. And we got this bill passed in one session of Congress. That does not happen. Am I right, Judge G? Does that happen at off and off? So I don't want that congratulations, but I want to congratulate all of the ones who helped get this legislation passed. And so that, I would say, is kind of the miraculous part of why this is an Easter weekend for us and for those who believe in the risen and direct, and really how this law came all of us from the, from the ashes in year one out to success in year two is something we should be thankful for. And Margie, thank you so much for inviting me and, and having these flag officers here. I, I feel pretty good standing next to them, actually. I don't look as good, but they certainly are good. But thank you so much for being here, everyone. So very glad you had a chance to meet the national director, uh, who will probably retreat and return to his email. <laughs> it gives us a great, great privilege now to introduce to you the daughter of a World War II veteran. But more than just that, she is your federal court district judge, the Honorable Dolly M.G. <laughs> Not only, not only is Judge G the daughter of a World War II veteran, but she's an avid Bruin alum. Uh, but uh, she's, she's always been a trailblazer for uh, human rights, uh, social justice, and what's fair. And so this is a message that uh, she continues to bring forward in what all that she does, all that she says, and we're very sorry that she lost a fight with the gardening incident. And uh, she comes on the, the modern day sedan chair, what we now call a wheelchair. Is this on? Hot mic, all right. Thank you very much, Margie. Margie and I go back to college days, so it's nice to be back with old friends. Thank you. I want to thank, first of all, all of the people who had anything to do with organizing this very uh, long overdue, uh, well-deserved recognition of the contributions of our Chinese American World War II veterans. Many of these veterans, men and women alike, who answered the call to service during a time of great peril in the world. One of those who answered the call to serve was my father, Jim Waji, a U.S. Navy veteran. <laughs> uh, 
On behalf of my entire family, I'd like to express our deep appreciation for the honor of the Congressional Gold Medal, which my father would have been so thrilled and honored to receive if he were alive today. I can just imagine him running around this ship taking tons of pictures from every possible angle. In fact, he probably would have organized all of us into a group picture by now. Like his father and his great-grandfather before him, my father came to the United States from a small farming village in Toisan, China. His is a familiar immigrant story. He came with no money and unable to speak the English language. He worked long hours and endured much hardship and discrimination. But like many of your parents and grandparents, he came here with a boundless optimism in the fact that he could make a better life for himself here in the United States and for his family in China and for his future family in America. My father enlisted in the U.S. Navy at the age of 18. And after the war ended, he got his engineering degree with the help of the GI Bill. He worked on the Apollo space missions and the space shuttle program, helping to advance America's leadership in space until he retired after nearly 40 years with the same company. I think we often underestimate the enormous impact that our Chinese American World War II veterans and veterans from other minority communities had in accelerating and energizing the movements for social change that changed our country for the better. For many service members who served during the World War II, their first interaction with a Chinese American person was not as a cook or a laundryman but as a gunner's mate, like my father was, or a pilot, or an infantryman, or a nurse, or even an officer. That had to have pierced through certain stubborn stereotypes and changed perceptions about their place and role in society. My father understood that this country is great and strong because of its diverse citizens. He also understood that what sets our country and its citizens apart is their vast potential for greatness. Having potential means that we have the capability to better ourselves, but it is not a guarantee. The fulfillment of potential is not something that is assured, nor does it just present itself without any effort. It is something that we must strive for in every generation. I read a troubling statistic recently. A national survey found that only one in three Americans could pass the multiple choice test consisting of questions from the US citizenship test. About 60% of those surveyed did not know which countries the United States fought against during World War II. 60%. That is a staggering figure. People are already forgetting about the sacrifices of our parents and grandparents' generation, or perhaps never learned about it at all. At a time when we cannot wear a face mask or get a painless jab in the arm in order to protect ourselves and others from a deadly disease without complaining bitterly about it, how can we even grasp the enormity of the sacrifices of the World War II generation, many of whom put their lives on the line for the greater good. That is our challenge today, ladies and gentlemen, as we remember our Chinese American World War II veterans through events like these. To honor their memory and their accomplishments, we must share the lessons we've learned from them with the younger generation so that their sacrifices will not be forgotten. I congratulate all of you who have come to honor the service and sacrifices of your loved ones in this very meaningful ceremony. Thank you for inviting me to speak.
It is our pleasure, now an honor, to introduce to you, first off, our generals and our rear admiral. Judge G, on behalf of the Congress of the United States, please accept this Congressional Gold Medal for your father's service during World War II, presented by Rear Admiral John Ewan. Navy to Navy. Since you're up, Rear Admiral, we thought it would be a special time to uh, introduce you uh, with the personal side of our flag officers. And here, Rear Admiral Jonathan Yoon and his wife, Sandra, who came all the way down last night to make sure he was here. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Hello, I'm John Ewan. Um, and I represent the Navy side of the award process. Um, and I want to just start off by saying thank you to the CACA team that put this all together. This is an incredible uh, ceremony. Um, we've been doing this for a little bit now. And I, as I understand it, this is, this is scheduled to be our last big event. Um, Ed named a bunch of folks to say thank you. I was told I had to go first today. I usually go last. I was told I had to speak a little longer and tell you a little bit about who I am and what I've done in the Navy. Um, so I want to start off with, with, with Ed's taking, starting where Ed ended, and he said thank you to everybody. Can anyone tell me what the flags mean that are flying over here? The red one and the kind of multicolored, four-colored flag, and then the four flags underneath it? Can anyone tell me what those mean? So when you stepped on, the, on this wonderful ship, it says BZ, Bravo Zulu, Iowa. And I think what Iowa was telling you all is good job. BZ in the Navy means good job. And that was always the, uh, the symbol. For those who actually know in some of the naval battles, um, they used to fly the Zulu flag when you, they had a victory. And that was kind of a big deal. So there's my little bit of trivia about Iowa. There's my little bit of trivia about the Navy. Um, so I can move along and tell you who I am. So, born and raised in San Francisco, and I think back uh, when I was a child of looking at the pictures of four of my uncles in their uniforms who had served in World War II. But back then as a child, I didn't understand that they were serving with about 20,000 other Chinese American patriots in World War II. My, uh, my dad uh, is a, is, was a draftee in, in the Korean War. And, um, and so when I was a child, uh, he used the, uh, the GI Bill and went to Stanford. And that was the family dream. I was going to go to Stanford. Um, we used to go to all the home games. We had season tickets. And so it was funny. Someone asked me, where did you go to school? And I said, I, I went to the Naval Academy. And they said, was that your dream? I said, no, it was actually to go to Stanford. I, I didn't get in. <laughs> um, so that was a very interesting day in the UN household when I got that wonderful thin letter. Um, but, but interestingly, in 1979, right, coming from San Francisco, I, I have to tell you, I was heavily recruited to go to West Point, the Air Force Academy, and the Naval Academy. And I, I did choose to go to the Naval Academy. I graduated in 1983. Uh, a little bit of trivia. Um, my junior year, so in 1981, the first semester, I was an exchange student at West Point. So I actually went to West Point for an entire semester. Um, I, had, I, I became bilingual. I didn't speak Chinese then, but I, I could speak Army. I learned Hua. So I learned how to say Hua with the best of them. Um, and so for those who have ever watched an Army-Navy football game, there are usually six cadets and six midshipmen right at the, the national anthem before that with the flags come out and they exchange prisoners. I was one of those prisoners. 
Um, if you look on my on my on my uh, left uh, chest here, you'll see I, I do have these gold um, uh, medals, and and those show what type of ships I was on. So my very first ship was a U, uh, was the uh, submarine. So I was on a nuclear submarine, the USS Narwhal, for three years. I, I've served on the USS Constellation down in San Diego, which is an aircraft carrier, used to carry about 72 aircraft. My last ship was the USS Nassau, a helicopter carrier. We carried about 36 um, aircraft and about 1,000 Marines. We were out there in, uh, in, in Iraq and Afghanistan, and so in 2001 to 2003, I served on Nassau. Um, we joke, we put the, our Marines ashore, 26 Mu, um, and the day that they went ashore, Saddam Hussein capitulated. So we always felt that we scared him and he stepped down. <laughs> um, when I started, uh, I guess another thing that's interesting about my career is I did two tours active duty in the, with the Army. So in 08 and 09, uh, I, went, I spent a year in Iraq and Afghanistan augmenting the forces with the Army. We used to joke um, that we were Army strong, Air Force smart, and Navy when it still wasn't good enough. Um, and then in 2012, I went back again into Iraq and Afghanistan, and I was in charge of the distribution to uh, bring everything home from Iraq and Afghanistan, and, and then to get things in still for, for sustaining things in Afghanistan. Um, I retired in 2018 after 35 years of active duty. When I finished, I was the um, 47th Chief of Supply Corps. So for five years, I served as the head of the uh, supply chain for the Navy, supporting 283 ships worldwide. We did all the uh, contracting for parts, food, ammo, fuel. I, I, we ran a $2.8 billion uh, store like a Nordstrom's and a hotel service as well. Um, so today, um, I retired in 2018 and we now live in Mountain View and I work for that small little company called Meta. Um, but we're really not here to talk about me. I will move along and we're really here to, to really honor the veterans um, and, and award this, this prestigious medal that, was, uh, that we have uh, minted. And it's gonna, I think one of the things that when I thought about this uh, on the stories that we are hearing today I think about a quote from John, John Quincy Adams that may reflect some of the deeds and stories of the veterans that we're going to honor today. I am a warrior so that my son may be a merchant, so that his son may be a poet. I want to thank you all for spending time with us today so you can share your stories with us, because we stand on the shoulders of these men and women who served, maybe not for a country of their birth, but for a country of their choice. And I think that's really important for us. And so as we move along and award these things, I wish to, con to um, everyone continued fair winds and following seas. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Not bad. Yeah. So uh, I'm Ted Wong. I'm uh, I'm here uh, helping to represent the, uh, the oldest service, Army. So, uh, anyways, uh, glad to be here. It's, a, it's an honor for me, as a Chinese American uh, retired veteran, to uh, pay homage and uh, pay honor to those that came before us. Um, Jonathan taught you a little bit about Navy lingo, so, and you've heard that term, hua, who knows what hua means? Oh, there's a few of you, so, everybody say hua, one, two, three. Hua! Okay, so, so that means great job. So, great job that you're all here. Uh, great job, Margie, and your team, putting on another uh, great ceremony, recognizing these uh, outstanding patriots. First time you didn't get punished enough, so you wanted to do it again. So, but it gives us an opportunity to, to hear these great stories and legacies of uh, these Chinese American World War II veterans. I served uh, 30 years in the Army. 
I was an Army dentist, Army officer, and I know that I could not have been as successful had not these 20,000 Chinese American World War II veterans uh, provided this great legacy of service, sacrifice, courage, and loyalty to a nation um, that really wasn't very uh, receptive at that time. A lot of prejudice, a lot of discriminatory laws, and makes you think, well, why did they do that? I like to think it's because of their upbringing, their core values as Chinese, where you, you, know, you give back to something greater than yourself. You look out for those that can't defend themselves. You stand up to bullies. You maintain your honor and integrity. Uh, those are the things that my father inculcated in me and, and my two brothers as well. He didn't serve. Uh, he was in that age gap that he was just too young to serve at the time. But his father was a general in the Nashville Army. So that's where his military influence came. And all those things uh, were passed down to us. And, and I think that's how we were inspired to join the military. And, uh, and, and stay with it for as long as we did. So again, it's just, for me, a personal journey of learning what's happened in the past, uh, talking to uh, some of you, learning about the stories of your veteran. It's just, it's just so enlightening, and I look forward to learning more. Uh, I, I did want to point out, I, or uh, give a shout out to Ed. I mean, he's the, like, the, the guy who got this whole thing going and then supported by the CACA and then the retired general officers that I have now had an opportunity to get to know better. Guys like uh, uh, Bob Lee and Jonathan Yuan, uh, Bill Chen and others. Um, this has just been personally rewarding to not only learn about all these uh, great uh, Chinese American patriots who came before, but also to, to meet the ones that are still walking around. So. Uh, looking forward to this ceremony. Uh, we, as Ed said, we must continue to recognize their achievements, their legacy, and then uh, also continue to remember it. And as he said, that's your responsibility now. You have, mu you have got to pass this down so that we don't lose uh, the lessons and uh, the stories of uh, honor and dedication. So with that, let's continue to recognize Good morning and aloha. As you can see, I'm not from California. But I wanted to add my congratulations and really high honor to be at this ceremony to recognize Chinese American World War II veterans. Well, Margie, this is the fifth one. And in all of them, you organized with your volunteers uh, a superb job in recognizing the community. Thanks to Margie. And what a fitting location to honor World War II veterans than on a World War II battleship like USS Iowa. So thank you, Captain Kelly Chan, for making this possible, and Cathay Bank. Thank you very much. And really a shout out, all of you that will be receiving medals today, you really need to thank Ed Gore because he undertook this national project and had the tenacity and strength to see it through to the end to include all the award ceremonies uh, to, to the veterans. I had an opportunity to work on previous Congressional Gold Medal projects and that's because that's how they found me. I was on the national team for the award of the Congressional Gold Medal 12 years ago now to the famed Nisei Japanese American veterans of World War II. And uh, so that's kind of my background and uh, so when Ed first called me up, and I s one year had gone by, and I said, how many signatures you got? Oh, we got, <laughs> we really have to hustle. And we did the, with Ed to finish, finish this off in the last year of that congressional session. I shudder to think that if we had not gotten all the signatures to have it, to do a redo during COVID, in the next session of Congress. We might still be, be at it. I need to, uh, a little bit about my background. I think 
I'm really the unintended general because <clears throat> unlike uh, Judge G's father and uh, many others that were Vietnam veterans like uh, Captain Chan, I was scheduled to be an Army Lieutenant in Vietnam and in 1971, not a single officer in my class was sent to Vietnam. The Army told me we're quitting the Southeast Asian War Games and you need to serve six years on active duty National Guard or Reserves. And I said, that's me. I'm going to be serving six years and I'm out of here. And I was going to try to be a good engineer. But lucky for me, although I didn't know it then, I was assigned to the most decorated infantry regiment in the United States Army, the 442nd Infantry Regiment and the 100th Battalion. And so now I know how lucky I was because a whole slew of World War II veterans, the sergeants, took me under their wing to teach this lieutenant what it was, what a, a successful lieutenant in the United States Army should be. So I had that mentoring, and so I kind of stuck around, stuck around, and um, had the honor of even commanding the 442nd Infantry Regiment. Who would have thought a Chinese American commanding the famous regiment of Japanese Americans? But that unit today is really uh, composed of the cross section of America. So I was, for this Congressional Gold Medal project, I was extremely honored to chair the design committee. So after the passage of the bill in 2018, well, what will the medal look like? Well, I need to explain that this medal is designed especially for you. Because the Chinese Americans that served in World War II, they were the only minority unit that was not assigned to segregated units. President Roosevelt said, China was an ally of the United States. China has been at war with the Empire of Japan for their invasion since 1937. We will not put Chinese Americans in segregated units. So that is why on my right, <coughs> you see Chinese Americans in their World War II gear in all of the services. This is how they serve. Okay. Now, having some experience with previous Congressional Gold Medals, we not only accounted for everybody to include the Merchant Marine, but we knew that females, Chinese American females, served in the Armed Forces of the United States, primarily the Army, <coughs> Naval Reserve, and Army Air Forces. And the common occupation was a nurse. So ladies, we didn't screw it up. We didn't leave the ladies out. <laughs> now, for the Chinese Americans that served, 40% were not citizens. Uh, because of the Chinese Exclusion Act, they couldn't become citizens. That's why it was very important to have those words, whether you were an American or not, all Chinese American World War II veterans served as Americans. And on the back side of the coin, <coughs> we wanted to depict how they fought. Chinese American World War II veterans fought on air, land, and sea. And they served in every theater of operations in World War II. Pacific, Atlantic, everywhere there was fighting, you would see Chinese Americans. You see, Chinese Americans were integrated into all the formations of the Armed Forces of the United States. So to represent the land forces, we chose the Sherman tank, the premier armored force in World War II. And for the Air Forces, the committee chose the iconic Flying Tiger, where many Chinese American World War II veterans served in the 14th Air Force in the Burma, China, India theater. And then for those that served in the Navy and the sea services, the World War II battleship. Sorry to the folks that liked the USS Iowa, but the, the committee insisted on BB-63, USS Missouri, where Japan sur surrendered to Allied and American forces to end World War II. So 
And uh, for those that quite don't know what service is on the front of the coin, all the services uh, surround the back of the coin. So that's how <coughs> the design of your metal came to be. So this experiment that was started by President Roosevelt to integrate minorities, primarily Chinese Americans, into all the formations of the Armed Forces of the United States, you never heard of any unit not accomplishing their mission. They integrated well. They performed all their jobs compared to the segregated units. So the question came up, why are we having our, our minorities serving in segregated units? So one more plus for the Chinese American World War II veterans. You did so well, you were the vanguard and the foundation of President Truman's executive order less than three years following World War II in July of 1948, ab abolishing segregation in the armed forces of the United States. So one more plus for the Chinese Americans, and with that came the opportunities in the armed forces of the United States for succeeding generations like Admiral Ewan, General Wong, and myself. So it's time we honor your steadfast patriotism and bravery, bravery, especially during the darkest days of World War II. And it's time we thank you for saving our country and the world. And it's time for you to take your place in America's history with all the previous recipients of the Congressional Gold Medal that started with General George Washington. So it's with the highest honor that Admiral Ewan, General Wong, and I present the Congressional Gold Medal on behalf of the Congress of the United States. Congratulations on your award. So we are now at that special time, and it is our honor and our duty right now to give presentation to 42 World War II veterans. We are very, very, very honored, especially honored, that we have eight, uh, eight widows, the wives of eight veterans who are with us today. So we will begin with them. So may we have the uh, Alan Lee, son of Bok Long Lao, come forward to assist Widow Sui Ying Lee. Yes. Presenting, Presenting Bok Long Lao, AKA Henry Lee, US Army. Accepting the award is his wife, Sui Ying Lee, with his son, Alan Lee. Presenting David Wong, U.S. Army, accepting his award. Widow Dore Ha Wong. Louise, can we have Louise come forward now? Presenting Jin Dan Wong, U.S. Army. Accepting the award is his widow, Louise Y. Wong, with daughter Jenna Wong Healy. Presenting veteran Herbert Q. Kwan, 
U.S. Army. Accepting the award is his widow, Sui Kwan, and son, Lawrence Kwan. Presenting veteran Gan Wa Wong, U.S. Army. Accepting the award is his wife, Dorothy Wong. Accompanied by, accompanied by daughter, Jean Wong Burns. Presenting Jack Leung Young with the U.S. Army. And accepting the award is his widow, Virginia L. Young, and son, Alex Young. Presenting veteran Richard Lane Tom Jr., U.S. Navy, a company present, uh, receiving on his behalf his widow Marilyn Chow Tom, accompanied by her daughters. <laughs> Lori Tom Yi, Kiana Joanne Tom. Last but not least, we have veteran William K.J. Ng, U.S. Army. Accepting the award is his widow, Betty Ng, and accompanied by his son, Jeffrey Ng. Well, okay, then, uh, are there any other Widows who've come forward but did not remember to tell me? <laughs> then I guess this begins our portion of there are remaining veterans for this afternoon. So beginning with our roll call and the presentation, and you can follow their names in the program, they will be in the center of your program. Beginning with our first veteran, Thomas Wing G, U.S. Army, accepting the award, his nieces, Florence Hui and Constance Wong. Presenting Henry Sao Chin, U.S. Army, accepting the award, his daughter, Pamela Chin. Okay. Presenting Henry W.F. Chin, U.S. Army Air Force, accepting the award, his son, Kelvin H. Chin. Presenting Yu K. Wu, U.S. Army, accepting the award, his son, Stephen Wu. <laughs> Presenting Thomas F. Hom, a.k.a. Tom F. Hom, U.S. Army Air Force, accepting the award together, his sons, Gordon Hom and Gilbert Hom. Yeah. 
presenting Yun Kwan, U.S. Army, accepting the award, his son, James Kwan. Presenting James Eric Hom, U.S. Army Air Force, accepting the award, his son, Glenn Hom. <laughs> Presenting Robert Bow, U.S. Army Air Force, accepting the award is his daughter, Nancy Bow. Presenting James King Fong, U.S. Army Air Force. Accepting the award, his son, Ken Fong. A veteran, Frank Gim Lee, presenting U.S. Navy. Accepting the award is his son, Ronald Louie. <laughs> Presenting Frank Lee with the U.S. Navy. Accepting the award, his daughter, Betty Lee Wong. Presenting Jem Yin Lu, go ahead, go ahead. U.S. Army Air Force. Accepting the award is his daughter Karen Lu Poliniak, with with Scott Lu son. <laughs> Presenting Chak Ak Chang Ak Chak, A.K.A. Francis, U.S. Army. Accepting the award is his niece, Susan Chalk Hanley. <laughs> Susan is also here to <clears throat> receive another medal for veteran Richard Tuck on Chalk, U.S. Marines, <clears throat> her father. Another Navy boy presenting Daniel Yi Ten. Accepting the award is his son, Brian Ten. <laughs> Daniel's brother, also in the service, David Yi Ten, presenting. His son was Michael D. Ten, accepting the award. Presenting Yun Song Wang, U.S. Army, and accepting the award, his son, Robinson Wang. <laughs> Presenting Wing Fu Li, U.S. Army Air Force, accepting the award, his son, Warren Li. Presenting Arnold Lee, U.S. Navy, and accepting the award are his daughters, Arlen Lee and Jennifer Timmons. <laughs> Presenting Jimmy K.F. Lee, a.k.a. Kam Fu Lee, U.S. Merchant Marine, 
Accepting the award is his daughter, Donna Lee, and son, Jameson Lee. <laughs> Presenting Mar G. Yun, U.S. Army. Accepting the award, his daughter, Judy Chan. Presenting Wing Hor Wu, a.k.a. Jin Sui, U.S. Army. Accepting the award is his granddaughter, Susan Wu Yamasaki. <laughs> Presenting Mitchell L. Wong, U.S. Army. Accepting the award, his son, Dennis Wong. Presenting Eugene Gufu Wong, U.S. Navy. Accepting the award, his son Eugene Wong. <laughs> Presenting Henry Tom, U.S. Army. Accepting the award, his nephew, Arthur Tarazo Tom. Presenting John Chan Tim, U.S. Army. Accepting the award is his son, Roger Tim. Okay, we've got a double whammy here. Albert Hun Gun Chan, presenting. U.S. Navy accepting the award, his family representative, Ron S. Chan, for son, Nathan Porter Chan. <laughs> and then we have uh, representing Henry K.W. Young with the U.S. Army Air Force. Presented by family representative Ron Chan for Nathan Porter Chan, nephew. <laughs> Presenting Kern H. Chan, U.S. Army. Accepting the award, his great grandnephew, Kai Wetterau. And presenting Joan Chun, U.S. Army Air Force. Accepting the award is his grandniece, Sharon Chun Wetterau. <laughs> presenting Jung Ji Suhu, U.S. Army Air Force. Accepting the award, his son Edmund Suhu. Presenting Nelson O. Wong, U.S. Army. <laughs> Accepting the award, his son, Waylon Chan. <laughs> Presenting Frank Louie, U.S. Army. Accepting the award is his grandson, Mike Fong, also now the Honorable Mike Fong, California State Assembly <laughs> member. <laughs> and I believe, I believe we've done our job. I believe, I believe Major General Bob has one more important piece of uh, business. 
One more presentation, please. This will be quick. I would like Mr. Ed Gore to join me here. And then I'd like General Ted Wong to come up here. He must be wondering, what did I do? But uh, all of the generals and admirals that have gone around the country to present awards, um, you know, they do it at their own cost. And uh, I just happened to be kind of the organizer because I knew at one time or another every Chinese American general or admiral. And so I've been kind of the assignee. You go here, you go there. And Ted Wong has always uh, found time to go to all the regions, the CACA regions, to present the awards. But he must be wondering, do I get a congressional gold medal? <laughs> you sure do, Ted. <laughs> I'd like, um, I'd like uh, the Chinese American Citizens Alliance president for the LA Lodge to come up and provide his closing remarks as well as acknowledgments. Thank you, Marjorie. My name's Wayne Ng, and I'm the president of Chinese American Citizens Alliance Los Angeles Lodge. Thank you. Thank you very much to the widows, the family, and friends who have joined us today uh, to celebrate, um, you know, the, the sacrifice and, and uh, service of your veterans. And they're really our veterans, right? Our Chinese American veterans. I would like to thank, of course, our speakers today, Judge G our generals, our admiral, of course, Ed Gore, our national director. He's also a past national president of the National Chinese American Citizens Alliance. So thank you again, Ed. I would also like to acknowledge, you know, all the groups and people that allow this type of event to happen. Thank you very much uh, to our title sponsor, Cathay Bank, uh, Mr. Liu, um, who in conjunction with Captain Kelly Chan, you know, secured this venue for us. Um, this is really a truly fitting venue, you know, kind of, this is the last major Southern California event. Um, and the reason why is the USS Iowa was witness um, at the end in Tokyo Bay, you know, at the end of the war in Japan. Um, its sister ship, or her sister ship, is the USS Missouri, which appears on the coin there. So that is a Iowa-class battleship there. We did have other events in Southern California. Um, we had a large event in Chinatown in November, as well as in the Simi Valley. and. Uh, Thank you for coming to this one. And maybe you guys are the lucky ones. You got this great, I mean, look, look at the big guns, you know. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Our co-sponsors for the event, um, Chinese American Citizens Alliance, Los Angeles, um, Chinese American Citizens Alliance, Greater San Gabriel Valley Lodge, the Chinese American Museum in Los Angeles, Chinese Historical Society of Southern California, Los Angeles CACA Community Action, National CACA Community Involvement Fund, and the UCLA Asian American Studies Center all provided fiscal and material support to making this event happen. A very special thank you to our, what we like to call the Southern California CGM Committee chairs, co-chairs, Marjorie Lee, of course, 
and Eugene Moy. Marjorie isn't even CACA, but she works, she's just like CACA. And she will be CACA. <laughs> but yeah, uh, both Eugene, Marjorie, and her right, right hand women, um, Gay Yuan there, Su Ellen Chang, and all the volunteers that she put together, the, South, the South Bay volunteers, thank you very much. Um, yeah, they did so much work over the past couple of months. Just so much. I know they've been working like day and night doing stuff. Um, I feel really bad. <laughs> I, I just cannot put that kind of hours in. You know, you, when you have work and stuff, you just can't do it. But in addition to the people who worked so hard and volunteered, I'd like to, of course, thank our venue, the Battleship USS Iowa Museum and the Pacific Battleship Center, which basically runs this museum. So please, uh, you know, if you have the opportunity, please go ahead and tour the, the museum. I believe that there's a discount uh, that you can get at the, the main window there. Thank you to our videography team, headed by Kenneth Ng and his team. And thank you to our photographer, Tommy Sue. Thank you very much. And of course, our color guards, you know, the Monro Arcadia, Monrovia, VFW Post, and also members of other local VFW posts for uh, presenting the colors, as well as doing what they're doing, standing up there all afternoon. And thank you very much. There. <laughs> She's hiding behind there. But anyways, so final thought. Um, my own maternal grandfather also served in World War II. Um, he served in the U.S. Army. Um, he was in the North Africa Theater, as well as the, he followed the Axis powers into um, Sicily and then into Italy. But unlike you guys who had uh, the foresight to register and things like that, my family, they're kind of laggards. We didn't get registered, so we didn't get the, you know, the gold medal. I did get it myself for, you know, our family. And as a matter of fact, I purchased the, the smaller ones for all my cousins um, on my maternal side. Um, so please do cherish these medals. Please do display them. Uh, please tell your children and your grandchildren the legacy of these World War II veterans. And let's just not forget the service that they performed. Oh, Ed, Ed has more. So before I bid you guys farewell, we're gonna have Ed do a final presentation, I guess. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Let me uh, thank you, Wayne, very much for your support. You know, I was going to get killed, and I know Jonathan's going to get killed when he goes home because we have not, I have not thanked my wife for all the years that she's put in with me, over 40 almost, I guess, something like that, and all the time that uh, she's had to learn, hear me gripe and complain about all the things that have happened on this project at 2 o'clock in the morning. Of course, she's gone to sleep by then, so I'm talking to myself most of the time, but, but I know Sandra's, Sandra here is as well, Jonathan Yun's wife, so Sandra as well, thank you for being here, and all the wives. Uh, Ted's mother's here, and, and, and Ted's wife is here as well, so thank you all for you know, supporting us and supplying this. Bob's wife is a smart one. She doesn't come, so she's okay, <laughs> so she's good, but um, some of the other groups who have obtained their medals, not, not just the Asian groups, but other groups who have they actually have made their um, awardees buy their own medals. <laughs> but we just didn't think that was right, the Chinese way of saying, you know, if we're going to award somebody something, we should find a way. So I want to thank the donors so much for doing this. And on behalf of our committee, the National Committee, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Kelly to come up here because I'd like to present him and the bank with a Congressional Gold Medal. And the reason I do this, or we do this, is because Really, it doesn't do a lot of good for the 4,000 families who have received one of these medals to just have it sitting in their mantle or in their trophy case or wherever it might be. But we want it to be out in the public space. 
We want it to be in a museum, a historical society, a library where you have not only Chinese American kids, but anyone who can see this medal and they'll say, what is that medal? What does that mean? What does it represent? And they'll say, first thing they'll notice is the faces look a lot different. But I would say that this medal represents the past, present, and future of the military of the United States, the greatest military in the, in the, in the world. And these are the faces that you're going to see from now on who will be serving our country. So, Chelly, let me ask you to come forward. Come, come forward and get this medal on behalf of the, the bank. <clears throat> and it will be a – I, I can't open it because I don't, I don't – I won't open it because I might drop it. So, but, Kelly, feel free to have it at the bank or at the bakery, if you like. That might be a good place to do. A lot of traffic there as well. But I also want to take an opportunity to present a uh, one volume, these two volume set. Some of you have your tributes of your family in here. There are about 500 stories that we've been able to, you know, have in this book. And I also want the bank and the bakery to have this set of books because it does represent. If you haven't had a chance to review the book, and maybe your family's not in here. I think, and it also talks about the entire project. So you have something in your, in your uh, bag that talks about this. So I want to present this set of books to you as well. And so thank you very much, everyone, for just, and thank the bank as well. Thank you, so, thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Ed.